But there's one important lesson we must learn from the history we've all been through and the history we've read about, and that is simply this. Fear is a great motivator. That if you can get people to live in fear, then you can sell them any damn thing that you want. And so basically what the whole idea is, is when we run out of one fear that has been pushing people in one direction, the organizations, the industries that are behind all this media and behind selling us all their products and ideas will come up with another fear, no matter which one it is. Sometimes it's a fear of the environment we live in. We talk about the water is bad, the air is bad, and everybody starts getting nervous about that. Then we talk about the bacteria and the viruses that are bad and the flu that comes around every year. And then we start talking about, oh my God, the radiation from Japan is going to you know, kill us all. Every time we start to get a little calm down, then we are faced with another new fear to take our minds off the immediacy of what's going on and in a moment of fear, very important as I describe in the lecture, that neural functions change in fear. Not only we change the chemistry of our body, but the stress hormones change the operation of the brain. That when we're in fear, the stress hormones squeeze the blood vessels shut in the forebrain, which is conscious reasoning and logic thinking. And forces the blood as a result of closing down the blood vessels in the front, forces the blood to the hindbrain, where we operate from reactive behavior, which is not thinking at all, it's just stimulus response. So the nature is, as we become more uh, engaged in fear, we become less intelligent, and at that moment more open to the resolutions provided by industry, who were selling the fear in the first place. So basically the issue is, I don't know what the exact next fear is. Maybe aliens are gonna be here. They're selling that one as well. Whatever you wanna talk about, they will find one, they will sell it, and the mass of the population will buy it. And as a result, they will be further disempowered and more power will be channeled in to the few that are making the decisions for the masses. Consider this, that we were born into heaven, that we came here to create. That's what we're doing. We're creating. When we're creating it right, heaven on earth is here. When we're creating it wrong, struggle is here. And all of a sudden I say, oh my God, don't wait till you die that you're going to go to heaven. You are, this is it. This is where you came to create. What do you want to create? Love? Coronavirus? You can create any damn thing you want. This is creation, please. But if you don't know that your creations are being controlled, then we become a victim of a world out of control. And yet we were the creators. We gave in to other people's beliefs. And then we now are creating not with our wishes and desires, we're creating with the program. Where's the program taking us right now? And the answer is fear, shutdown, breakdown of the system, I go, we can learn or not. That's it. And this is a learning moment. Take your power back. You are beyond, uh, power-wise, beyond any virus that ever existed. We live in fear of the person who coughed right next to you or the person down the street who doesn't look that well. Oh my God, I got to stay away from them. Every year, about 0.1% of the population will die from every flu that comes up every year. It's not different than flu, it's just a bad flu. It's dangerous except for this, it can be treated. <laughs> the coronavirus is a flu virus and they wanna say it's not the flu and I go, look, a flu has a range of symptomology. You've experienced that range yourself. Some flus, you don't even know you had the flu. <laughs> it, it, the immune system takes it and runs with it so fast that it, it eliminates the symptoms even before they manifest. So you may have had flus in the past, didn't even know you had it because the active the immune system would eliminate it. First of all, let's understand something. What is a flu and what is cold season all about? 
There are a number of different viruses, rhinoviruses and coronaviruses, that annually show up every year and bring us all the symptoms of a flu or a cold. The viruses that affect the respiratory system, where the air is coming in and going out, air is coming in and going out, are viruses that actually replicate at temperatures below body temperature. When a, a virus of this cold nature infects a cell, it doesn't replicate at 98.6 or 37 degrees. That's too warm. So basically, if the temperature drops a couple of degrees, then the virus kicks in. So the virus doesn't operate at body temperature. It operates at a colder than body temperature. That's why flu season is associated with winter. The average person is going to have flu symptoms that range from, I didn't even know I had the coronavirus, to respiratory distress. That is a threatening problem. And respiratory distress means that the symptomology has pushed the system and the respiratory influence of those virus down your respiratory tract from your throat all the way down in your lungs uh, is open for infection by this virus. It, it could get worse. It's dangerous except for this. It can be treated. <laughs> so having respiratory distress is not the end problem. If you can get treatment, uh, it, it'll go away. It's a bad flu. Coronavirus is a bad flu. The largest portion of the population is not going to die, even though the news media threat is, they didn't come on and say, Flu season, it's going to be aggressive this year, take care of yourself. No, they come on and say, aggressive flu is going to kill up to millions of people. And it's like, jeez, <laughs> as soon as I hear that, it's like, okay, it's not every regular year now. It's like, I could die, millions of people, that includes me. And the fear is becoming a problem. But in some countries, they started testing everybody. But guess what they found? About 50% of the population that was tested had previously been exposed to this virus but has no symptoms. In other words, there's a massive number of people, 50% of the population that was tested had already been exposed to the virus and they had no symptoms. It means a very important fact that their immune system is working so good that even though they were exposed to the virus, that virus was not able to overtake the system because of the strength of their immune system. The bigger problem you have is the fear of the virus. In a fear response, the biology of the body changes to put energy into escaping the fear. If you like Succeed with Knowledge, subscribe and give us a thumbs up. And thanks a million. Cheers.